Well, a new showdown in Washington today over Wall Street's new rule book, this time at the Senate Banking Committee. My next guest says those hundreds of rules uh, aren't going to do much to change the financial industry. He's the former U.S. Deputy Secretary of the Treasury and also the chairman and founder of Evercore Partners, Roger Altman. The Roger Altman, thank you very much again for nice being with you, me. Um, not one rule you think, Roger, is going to change the financial industry? Or am I over-exaggerating? Well, my point, Betty, would be that uh, Dodd-Frank uh, uh, has not had the impact and will not have the impact of reshaping Wall Street, mm. uh, of transforming it. There was a great deal of debate about that during the very long period uh, in, during which the legislation was being fought over. Would this be transformative and so forth? I think we can tell now that it's not transformative. Uh, and, and the industry is adjusting to it. Of course, uh, that'll take a while, but fundamentally is adjusting to it. And I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to look back on it and say, wow, that changed the shape of Wall Street or the change of shape of finance, it's just not going to have that effect. It, right. It, it, it sounds it's not a revolution no. as, as what we might have expected. But there are certain key aspects of it, though, that are certainly uh, certainly gotten a lot of attention from Wall Street, yes. right? The Volcker rule, yes. changes on derivatives trading, um, even the Consumer Financial Protection Agency. Uh, you know, would you I, say... I mean, th those, those have uh, caused certain behavior to change, yes, uh, and, and increasingly may do so. Like, for example, the... the uh, Putting of most derivatives tra tra uh, trading on on exchanges and centrally clearing them and so forth. Right. But <clears throat> is it fundamentally going to change the way uh, the universal banks, for example, truly operate and what they look like? Uh, I don't think so. So, then, Roger, in your view, what needs to change then? What has perhaps changed outside of these Dodd Frank rules that actually could affect Wall Street more significantly? Well, I think there are two answers to that. First, <clears throat> I think Wall Street actually. Uh, uh, has uh, changed a lot itself, not necessarily impelled by the law, mm -hmm. because, of course, of the enormous losses and the enormous problems that we saw during the crisis. So, in other words, so many firms have made internal changes in terms of credit approval processes, risk management processes, obviously management changes themselves, and I think made a whole series of adjustments to try to prevent, uh, uh, apart from any legislation, that they're making those mistakes again. That's number one. Number two, I think Basel III, which remains to be fully uh, rolled out and, remains, mm -hmm. and, we, and where we don't yet know precisely how it will be defined, it will ultimately have a bigger effect on the shape of finance than Dodd-Frank will have. Uh, because, Dazzle, <clears throat> because Basel III will determine uh, the levels of capital adequacy and the levels of liquidity, which are widely expected to be a lot tighter than its predecessors, its predecessor rules. Right. Uh, and I think that's just going to have a more profound effect. There's much talk, as you know, about the degree to which uh, the final shape of Basel III will uh, cause uh, many institutions around the world to have to raise a lot of capital right. uh, and have to uh, perhaps sell a lot of assets in order to improve their capital, improve their liquidity. Now, we don't know how that's precisely going to turn out, but I, my own view is Basel III will end up having more impact on the shape of finance around the world than Dodd-Frank did. Net, net, that would be a positive, though. Well, we have to see how it, how it, is how these rules are defined. They haven't yet been promulgated. There are still some important decisions to be made. We don't know the final shape of Basel III. Okay. Uh, but, but I think it will be in general a positive. My own hope is that they'll take a pretty conservative approach toward Basel III. In other words, relatively tight definitions on. On, on, on capital and the transition period to the new rules and so forth, because I think that would be in the interest of the financial system around the world over the long term. Roger, how does this whole, you know, overhang, even if, if the Dodd-Frank, you know, legislation doesn't actually, you know, really change, fundamentally change Wall Street, but how does this overhang actually even just change the way you do business at your bank? Well, you know, we're not a bank in, the, in, the, in, in any normal sense of the term. Right, we're, of we're, course. We don't lend, we don't trade. Uh, so f the short answer is it hasn't it hasn't um, uh, affected us because uh, because of the nature of our business model, uh, and and I as I said at the beginning uh, I don't think we're going to look back on Dodd Frank and say, gee look how it changed the way but, finance is actually conducted around the world I, right. uh, or in the United States particularly I don't think we're going to have that effect. Right. I think much of the fear uh, uh, initially about how this was going to uh, undermine Wall Street and undermine finance has proved, uh, 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 has not been borne out. Well, Roger, what I'm driving at is how does it change even the dialogue that you have with management or the dialogue that you have with the board, just knowing that this is in the background, that this is being worked on in Washington? Well, I think the answer to that is not much. Uh, I mean, in other words, I don't think this has turned out to be uh, a profound event, Dodd-Frank. Mm. 
compared to a lot of concerns that it might be and, and negative concerns that it might be. It just hasn't. Uh, I, in, in my interactions with uh, the largest institutions, the universal banks and so forth, uh, and I have a lot of those, um, I don't detect that they're rethinking their entire approach or even moderately rethinking it on account of this because I think mm. if you study what actually happened on the Volcker Rule and how ultimately it was defined and the transition period and the so-called basket, a 3% basket that institutions are allowed to, to have and then if you look at how they uh, actually define certain other aspects of the bill, right. it didn't turn out to be as tough as I think a lot of people had expected. Is it a nothing? No, it's not a nothing. I think it's constructive. But it hasn't turned out to be as tough as so many people thought. And Roger, quickly, uh, I've got to ask you, though, you know, your name was, of course, uh, out in the press as someone to replace uh, Larry Summers, and eventually Gene Sperling got that job. But right. uh, do you still have a hankering to get back to Washington to make a difference there? Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't seek that, uh, as I think people involved in the process well know. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've always uh, enjoyed serving. I had the privilege of serving twice before. Uh, if I was ever asked to serve, uh, you know, in a meaningful way, I would always be—I would always try to do that. Uh, but I'm—I've I've been very fortunate in so many ways, and, and Evercore, of course, has been such a, a, a great success. I'm very happy where I am, and uh, you know, you, you often learn in life that uh, the things that you. Uh, that don't come your way end up being your best friend. So <laughs> that's true. Uh, I, I'm doing fine. Wall Street, full of happy accidents in some ways, right? Roger Altman, yes, great you. to see you.